Millions of American businesses took out federal loans during the COVID-19 pandemic. Some you ultimately didn't have to pay back and some you do. One D.C. business couple hit some roadblocks as they tried to untangle their COVID relief loan and turned to consumer investigative reporter Susan Hogan to get some help. So many businesses suffered during the pandemic. Then there's Cut 7, a D.C. fitness studio that actually grew with the help of a loan from the Small Business Administration. They did so well, they decided to open a new location in Arlington last year, but nearly lost everything when that old loan came back to haunt them. Kettlebells, dumbbells. When the pandemic hit, Cut 7 gym owners Chris and Alex Perrin did what it took for their business to survive. To keep everybody employed, we wiped out our his entire 401k. And like millions of Americans, they turned to the federal government for help. In 2020, they took out a $24,000 COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan from the Small Business Administration to help keep their business afloat. You never had to lay off any employees. We had a conversation with every single one individually. We averaged out what their average paycheck was and maintained it. Their hard work paid off. While so many companies around the world closed during the pandemic, their business thrived. We more than doubled during COVID. And they wanted to double their reach. And in 2022, took out a $575,000 SBA-backed loan to build a gym in Arlington. They got approved, but during construction last year, realized they needed even more money. As we were closing, it came up. They said, you have an idle loan, an EIDL loan, and it's coming up in default. In default. What did you think about that? <laughs> we were shocked. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that 24,000 COVID relief loan? Well, the parents had made a few payments on the loan, but they didn't realize they had fallen behind. They say they thought their payments were set to auto payment. It put us in a really precarious position. They weren't alone. The SBA's Office of Inspector General estimates roughly 1.3 million loans under $100,000 were delinquent as of last May. Until the parents could fix it, their bank refused to give them any more money and construction on their new gym came to a halt. We're not just trying to deal with the SBA. We're trying to deal with our landlords, our bills, everything. So I'm sure you called SBA and said, can you help us out? If there is an SBA number, we have called it every day. We emailed every day. Chris and Alex made payments to bring their loan current, but say trying to get the SBA to move them out of default status wasn't a quick process. There are thousands and thousands of people having the same issue and that you just have to wait your turn. COVID may be over, but the repercussions are not. Trevor Curran and Linda Ray run a business and YouTube channel advising people just how to navigate these SBA loans and say, unlike the Paycheck Protection Program loans, which were mostly forgiven, defaulting on EIDLs can cause big problems. If you want to do get, get another, more money, get more money, grants or loans, not happening. They say it takes time to get the problem fixed, even if you pay up. You can bring the payments current, but you then have to send an email to SBA to say, please update my status and then wait for them to update the status in the system. Such a good noise. It's such a good noise. <laughs> Just to see it. In the end, it took about five weeks for the SBA to move the parents out of default so that their loan could go through. They opened their new gym this month. I'm shaking because like I didn't think it was going to happen. And they say while they are grateful to the SBA for programs that help businesses like theirs, this was a growing pain they hope to never feel again. Now, the SBA tells us that while verifying a borrower's payments can take up to a few months, they do have a faster process for people waiting on outside financing that can take just a few days. They recommend having your lender make that request. Now, the parents, however, say they were never told about that option. Meanwhile, the loan experts we spoke to shared these tips for untangling your loans. First is make a payment 
any payment that you can, even if you can't pay all that you owe. Don't ignore the SBA's attempts to reach you and we'll add, make sure they have your current contact information too. The parents say they updated theirs, but messages were still sent to the old address, so be sure to check. Number three, reach out by phone and email like the parents did to discuss your situation and send follow-up emails for every phone conversation. And finally, four, read your loan agreement to understand all of your responsibilities. Oh, it can be so stressful. So for more on those tips, including the phone numbers and email addresses to use, visit NBCWashington.com or our NBC Washington app and search for investigations.